Well met everybody and welcome to another episode of Hearthstone Tips. Sorry by the way for taking so long, but you know, sometimes life acts like a jealous girl or boyfriend and just won't release you no matter how hard you try. But back to the topic, back to Hearthstone. Today I would like to talk about baiting out cards of your opponents. Some of you may look a little bit skeptical now, I'm sure, but believe me, if you actually pay a little closer attention on when you play your minions, you'll be surprised of how often you can actually bait out those critical cards like Polymorph, Hex, or the Priest Shadow Words. I'm now going to show you two very basic video examples to make everything a little bit clearer for you guys. In the first game, I am facing a priest, the class which is probably most feared for its mind control mechanics and these super annoying shadow words. With my yeti on the board, however, my position looks pretty solid. My opponent responds with a gnomish inventor, which isn't really too scary and leaves me well ahead. Now that I'll be able to spend 4 mana, I basically got two choices. Either play my mana tight totem and my argent squire, or play my own gnomish inventor. Since my opponent had not played any shadow word pains yet, I decided to go with Gnomish Inventor, since I didn't want to lose my Mana Tide Totem to a Shadow Word that easily. In the end, I baited out a Shadow Word to keep my more precious card, the Mana Tide Totem, alive in the following turns. And basically, this decision made me win the game due to superior card draw and tempo gain. In the second video, we're playing against a Mage, probably the class with the most direct damage and crowd control spells in the game. Right in the beginning, I have two options. The Flame Tongue Totem and a Lightning Bolt, or the Mana Tide Totem for 3 mana. I had to keep in mind though that the Mage had not played any Frost Bolt yet, so I decided that playing the valuable Mana Tide was a little bit too risky. Instead, I chose to play the slightly less valuable Flame Tongue Totem. In the same match, I was expecting to face a flame strike at some point during the game, because most decks use at least one of them. Instead of playing the Azure Drake or our good friend Harrison Jones, I merely summoned an Argent Squire and a Swamp Bizzle. While my board still looked strong with 4 minions, there weren't really many valuable targets for a flame strike to hit. Once I got rid of the fiery threat, it was time to play the big boys. So to wrap things up guys, I would like to encourage you to constantly check your hand, analyze the board situation and then decide what minions to play and what minions to keep in your hand. Generally speaking, if you are slightly behind or even far behind, it's not really recommended to play weaker minions just to bait out something, because then you're definitely gonna lose. In that case, you gotta gamble and make a comeback, so play the strongest minions available. But if the game looks about even, however, or you're ahead, there is no need to give your opponent good targets for his crowd control or nuke spells. So it is very much possible to play a little bit more cautiously and trying to potentially bait something out. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching guys. Talk to you later and may the card gods watch over you.